how to pack for Paris with just a carry-on. Hi ladies, it's Erin and welcome back to my channel. Through my channel, my goal is to make your life simpler, to help save you time, to help save you money when it comes to your personal style. I want you to look like the very best version of yourself each and every day. Not easy to do. One of the areas many of us struggle with is packing. I get messages all the time about packing. People just very confused about what to pack, very frustrated about it. It is one of these situations that it doesn't even matter well, it does matter to some extent how much experience you have, but my point is even I get anxiety and get majorly stressed when it comes to packing, especially if it's for a big trip. Recently, my husband and I went to Paris. We went alone without kids. We were only there for four days, so it was a really short trip, basically over a long weekend, and I knew that we weren't gonna check bags. My husband requested that we not check bags because when you check bags, you have a lot less flexibility in terms of switching flights, which can happen and you know happens a lot for my husband and I. You have flexibility when you don't check your bags and then also you save time because you're not sitting and waiting for your bags to come out. It also helps save you some anxiety because you don't have to worry about losing your bags or the airline losing your bags. If I had gotten to Paris, I'm only there like three, three, three nights, four days, and I didn't have a bag, I would have been really disappointed and it would have kind of set a tone that I wouldn't have wanted for my trip. There's a lot of value to really figuring out a way to pack in just a carry-on bag. So you have the flexibility, the save time at the back end, and then also less anxiety because no one's gonna lose your suitcase. It's worth doing if you can swing it. I did do a whole video on how to pack like a pro. It's really key that you watch that video as well because what I talk about and delineate in that video is all of the resources you need in order to pack light. And if you don't have the right resources, packing light is going to be almost impossible. Make sure that you have the tools that you need in order to pack light. So that's gonna include things like packing cubes, the right suitcase, all of that stuff, the stuff. Okay, so I will put a link to that video. This video is more about specifically tips to help you pack for a Parisian trip in your carry-on bag. This will also work, by the way, to really any European city or any European destination. Obviously, it's not gonna work if you're doing like a hiking trip in the Alps or you're going cycling through the French countryside. Like those are different trips. This is a city trip. This is you going to a major European city as a tourist and wanting to know what to pack in that suitcase. The first thing I wanna talk about are the resources that you need, the stuff. And again, I can't stress enough that you need to go watch that other video. I break it all down. I talk about each individual resource, but you need to have the right suitcase, obviously. You need to have a suitcase that is a carry-on size, and that is different for different countries. You also need to have packing cubes. That's an integral part and an integral tool for your carry-on bag. I can fit so much stuff in my suitcase when I have those packing cubes. You need to have an ancillary bag, a secondary bag. The secondary bag is as important as your actual suitcase. So what I do is I put all of the clothing and shoes into my carry-on suitcase. And then in the secondary bag, I put any technology that I have, like from headphones to backup batteries to cables. I also put all of my toiletries in that bag and anything extra. Those are the tools that you really absolutely have to have. And I break down all of them in that other video. I'll put a link Blow. The second thing I would highly recommend for your trip is to make sure you try everything on before you pack it. So let's say you've packed everything up, you know, it's on your bed or it's on your floor and you've got piles of, of clothes and you've got your, your top pile and your pant pile and your shoe pile and your bra underwear pile. Make sure you actually try on the clothes and put together head to toe outfits. Once you kind of put those looks together and you take pictures in the mirror and you see, okay, I like this look, this is a good look. That really helps, especially if it's a short trip. So you can say, okay, this is what I'm gonna wear during the day when we're sightseeing, and this is what I'm going to wear out to dinner that evening. Or I'm gonna transition with this 
into evening by just bringing this jacket. So you have a plan. And if you do find that when you're taking your pictures and you're putting these outfits together and there's a, a, there's maybe one piece where you are only gonna wear it once and you can't wear it with anything else, like maybe it's a pair of shoes, that's the thing you eliminate first when you're trying to pare it down. That will help you to get rid of any of the extra stuff to slice off the fat, you know what I mean? And what I did for this trip is I create, like I've told you guys before, I create an album in my phone. So I have all the looks that I can create from all of the pieces in my suitcase. And the reason I like to do that is because number one, it helps me slice off the fat, get rid of those extra things I don't need. Number two, it helps me to see like all of the combinations I can use for those individual pieces. Let's say I had planned for this outfit for my first day of sightseeing, but now it's like a rainy crappy day and I don't feel like wearing that. Well, I can look back here in my quick phone photo album and see what else do I have, whether outfit can I create that feels more appropriate and comfortable for this weather. I love having that. It's my own little like style book for the trip. It's really helpful, you guys. I know it seems like this extra step. I think somebody wrote a comment to me. Like, <laughs> he said, I can't believe that people go to this length for a trip, but this kind of planning in advance, it just, everything is just so much in my opinion, less stressful on the other end. You wanna go on that trip and be able to enjoy the trip, to step out and feel comfortable, to step out and feel good, to step out and feel stylish, and not worry about like, oh shoot, I forgot this, or I didn't bring this, or this doesn't work with this, or does this look nice with this? It's a little extra step, but it just definitely will make that whole trip go a lot more smoothly, and you'll feel a lot more confident and self-assured about your choices. And remember to really think about each piece you know, if you can't wear it multiple ways, don't even bring it, don't bother. The third thing we need to talk about are shoes. On a trip like this, the most important thing that you can bring and the most thought that you need to put into any particular category is your shoes. Especially if you're doing a lot of sightseeing, you know you're going to be doing a lot of walking. Maybe you're just gonna hop into an Uber and go from Uber to attraction back to Uber. And then maybe you don't need to worry so much about your shoes. But most of us, when we go to a new city, me personally, I love to walk and walk and walk and walk and walk. I feel like that's one of the best ways to see the city. The other way is to jog. If you're jogging, that's awesome too. So shoes and what shoes you bring are incredibly important. You do not want to have a situation where you're walking and your feet start to hurt and then you're miserable and you can't enjoy it because it really does ruin the day. Also, if you're if you're bringing a carry-on bag, you are very limited as to the number of shoes that you can bring. You're even more limited if you wear a large size shoe. I'm about a seven and a half. My shoes are not that big. I can get away with bringing an extra pair of shoes, but in general, you wanna think about bringing three pairs of shoes. If you've got little shoes, like a ballet flat or a, a little mule, you could probably squeeze in an extra pair, three to five, let's say, depending on the size of the shoe. On this trip, I was able to bring several pairs of shoes. I kind of chunked out some extra clothes so that I did have more room for shoes. But again, all of them comfortable, all of them manageable heel, all of them interchangeable with all of the pieces that I brought and functional. So they're very functional, versatile pieces. I brought a pair of new ankle boots with me with a very small manageable heel. And I also brought a pair of white mules with me that are easy to get on and off, that are relatively comfortable, that I did have a chance to break in before I brought with me. Those were the shoes that I turned to for dressier outfits, for the dinner outfits. And the booties, I did not wear out sightseeing, but I did wear them out to dinner. And I was really glad that I had them. I really loved the look of the booty, especially on days where it was a little bit rainy and damp. I didn't wanna wear like a mule or anything like a ballet flat. I wanted to have socks and I wanted to wear those clothes to comfortable shoes. My heaviest, biggest, chunkiest shoes, which were my ugly sneakers, I actually wore on the plane because then they don't take up all that room in my suitcase. So wear the pair of shoes that is the heaviest, that is the bulkiest, that will take up the most room, and then that way you save yourself some space. Those sneakers were my travel shoes. They were also my sightseeing shoes for two of the days. I wore them basically 
most of the trip because both travel days plus two sightseeing days. I also brought a pair of ballet flats that I wore on one of the sightseeing days. The ballet flats are by Tori Birch. They're cap toe, which feels very French. They're comfortable, but they didn't offer a lot of support. I think that if you're looking for a ballet flat that you can walk miles and miles and miles in and not have to worry about them, I would go with the AGL ballet flat. They're very expensive, but in terms of support and comfort, there's no comparable ballet flat out there. You could go and try and buy a Chanel ballet flat. It's not gonna be nearly as comfortable as the AGL. You could buy the Tory Burches. They're not nearly as comfortable as the AGL. You can go with Sam Edelman. The Felicia flats are great. They're not nearly as comfortable as the AGL. So if you're gonna do one pair of real walking ballet flats, go with the AGL. If you just want them in case your sneakers start bothering you or to store in your bag, you wore heels out to dinner and you wanna have that backup ballet flat shoe, then any ballet flat that you already own and wear will be great. One of the keys with all of your shoes is to make sure that you break them in. You do not wanna bring, for example, a pair of white sneakers, like maybe Golden Goose sneakers or Adidas Superstar sneakers, and you only just bought them a week ago. Those will not work. You will get blisters. You need to break in your shoe way before you go weeks before. Also, what I would consider seriously is blister prevention, like bring a little mini blister prevention kit in your toiletry bag. I have this spray, it's called Still Standing Foot Spray that helps when you know you're gonna be on your feet all day, you spray that in advance of putting on your socks and shoes or just your shoes. I did talk about this in a Fashion Fix It video and it's all these little style secrets. So you guys may, may wanna check out that video and I'll put a link to it below. But Blister Blocker, which is basically the same thing as the Runner's Balm, uh, that you might use the anti-chafing because I just ran a marathon last year and I know like where um, I usually get friction on my feet and it's usually between, sounds so weird and specific, but I just know, it's between my big toe and my second toe. Anytime you like run over 12 miles, you'll know exactly where the friction is. So I can rub this like between those two toes and actually prevent blistering. If you know like, oh gosh, these shoes are already rubbing on my heel a little bit and I wanna bring them, but I'm really scared about it, then just put either medical tape, you know, the paper medical tape on your heel or put Band-Aids on your heels. Blister prevention, okay? The next tip I wanna share that I think is so incredibly important and undervalued, underrated, is to pack one color story. Basically, you're deciding like before you begin your packing process. What is my base color going to be? Is it going to be black? Is it going to be neutral tones like white, beiges, blush? Is it gonna be navy? Is it gonna be tan? What is your base gonna be? And then build your whole little mini capsule wardrobe around that color story. And the idea being that everything seamlessly integrates together. For this trip, I wanted to do whites and creams and beiges and tans and pinks, all of those beautiful, light, neutral colors. I'll get more into what Parisians wear in another video, but essentially, they do not wear light colors. In terms of blending in, definitely not this color story. If you wanna blend in, you're gonna go with the black color story. But it doesn't mean I was regretting my choice. I was really happy to have those light, bright colors against sort of the really gray, dark weather that we had there, and then also the grays and the dark colors in the city. Your color story also, it goes right down to your accessories and your shoes. Back to the shoes for a minute. So I had the white pair, I had a linen pair of sneakers, I had white sneakers, beige booties. And then I brought one handbag, it was a white handbag. So that works with the beige, it works with the sneaker, it works with the, the linen sneaker, it works with the white mule. All of those colors work together with the pieces, the clothes that I packed as well. The last tip I wanted to share about, you know, packing in a carry-on successfully for your Parisian trip is to make sure you bring travel size everything. Because I have amassed kind of a lot of beauty products over the years, I have a lot of like sample size, travel size beauty products. So I'll bring sample size or travel size makeup, shower oil, conditioner, toothpaste, shampoo, all of that. Sample or travel size. 
it will save you so much space. Colleen Rothschild makes a Discovery Collection travel set with sample sizes of many of her best-selling products. Bring something like that. Invest in something like that for your trip. Or just look and see what you have and have a hodgepodge of things put together. But definitely bring those travel size, skincare, beauty, makeup products. It's going to just really save so much space. And also, you can only have this tiny little quart size liquid bag. Not everybody in the US enforces it anymore, but in Europe they do. I had to like really pare back the liquids. One of the ways you can save on liquids is to have a solid deodorant, maybe skip shampoo and just bring conditioner because usually the hotel or the Airbnb will have shampoo already. Wherever you can swap a solid for a cream or a gel or a liquid, do that because that quart size bag fills up so fast. And you know what? Don't bring any books. Don't bring any magazines. Have that all digitally. Have it on your phone. That saves a ton of space because you don't want to be lugging around magazines. Okay, so I know I didn't delineate exactly what I packed in my suitcase and I want to make sure that you are aware of exactly what I brought. I will put links to everything in the description box except the toiletries because I won't even have the space to list all of that. So I'll just list the clothing and the shoes that I brought with me on the trip. I did bring two extra things that you all wouldn't need to bring. That was a black dress and the white jumpsuit. Both of those were for shooting. And so I wanted to shoot some special pieces in Paris for the blog. I will put links to everything below in the description box that I packed in my suitcase, all the clothing and all of the shoes. So you guys can check those out if you're interested. Also, if you wanna know exactly what I wore, like the outfits that I put together while I was on the trip, I'm gonna tape a separate video for that and I will put a link to that below in the description box so you can check out that video. You can also find the looks over on Instagram and they are shoppable through the Like to Know app, which I've talked about before in my Shopping Secrets video. So I'll put a link to that Shopping Secrets video below as well. I hope that those general tips were helpful to you. Again, remembering that the most important part of packing light and packing in a carry-on is to have those resources available to also think about packing a mini capsule wardrobe, packing in a similar color story so that everything mixes and matches together. That's gonna provide the most versatility. I also highly recommend planning those outfits in advance, taking photos of the outfits, and just having that catalog on your phone so that you can reference in a pinch to help you when you're on your trip. It's just gonna make it so much better and I promise you it's worth that extra preparation and time. Do let me know if you guys have any questions at all. As always, if you have an amazing packing resource you wanna share with us or packing tip that you wanna share with us, please do. We are a community, we share resources and we welcome your tips and your suggestions. So thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.